When it comes to analyzing stocks, one of the most important metrics that you can analyze is the free cash flow per share. In this video, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can calculate this very important metric, how it is that you can get it right on your Excel or Google Sheet spreadsheet, and how you can use this metric to find valuable investment opportunities faster. Okay, so before we discuss how it is that you can calculate the free cash flow per share, what we're going to do is first go over the free cash cash flow per share formula and as you can imagine this formula is very simple the free cash flow per share is equal to the free cash flow divided by the number of shares outstanding now the free cash flow that is the key number right but this is why in this formula you can see that the free cash flow is essentially equal to the operating income and this is a number that you can get from the cash flow statement of a particular company minus the capital expenditures once you take this minus that that gives you the free cash flow of the company as a whole and then you can just simply divide that by the number of shares outstanding and there you go you will be able to calculate the free cash flow per share of any company that you like now what i want to go ahead and do is put this free cash flow per share formula into practice and what we're going to do is calculate this number for apple so the first thing that you need to do as you can imagine is to get the company's financial statements and then from there we'll be able to apply the formula and get the number Number. For that, I'm going to be using Y Sheets. So this is an item that works on Excel and Google Sheets. And all you need to do is enter the company name and then select the appropriate company you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for Apple and the NASDAQ. After that, what you can do is select whether you want annual data or quarterly data. The formula is exactly the same for both time periods. In this case, what we're going to do to keep things simple is to use the annual data. After that, just simply click on get data and what's going to happen is that you're going to get all of the company's financial growth key metrics cash flow balance sheet income statement etc so as you can see we get all these data now what we're looking for are the relevant metrics that apply to our free cash flow per share calculation so if you can recall there's two ways of calculating the free cash flow per share one of the things that we could do is if we already have the free cash flow which in this case we already have i'm just going to zoom in so in this case you can see the free cash flow and this number is on a historical annual basis so what we could do very simply is if we wanted to calculate this i'm just going to copy this free cash flow per share all we need to do is take this number and then we need to divide it by the number of shares outstanding which is usually a number reported on the income statement so i can select either the weighted average shares outstanding or the diluted number it is really all up to you whatever you want to use in this case i'm going to use this number so i select it click enter and there we go now we have the free cash flow per share which if you look over here on the key metrics you will see that is exactly the same number that you can see right here on a historical basis but i'm going to show you more on that later so if we go back to the cash flow we can see that this is the same number okay great now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate it using the other method and both answers should be exactly the same the other method, if you remember, is very simple. You take the operating cash flow, which is exactly here. Or you can also use, in this case, the operating cash flow here. It's the exact same number. So we're going to take this and then we're going to subtract the capital expenditures of the company, which are essentially the investments that the company made. In this case, because the number is already negative and we want to subtract, we're going to say plus. So that way, plus and a minus becomes a minus and then and this actually subtracts so if we just click enter now we see that instead of 122 billion we have 111 billion which is the perfect number and now all we need to do is make sure to enter the brackets so that the calculation is done properly and then select the weighted average shares outstanding click enter and there we go we get the exact same number of course this is just rounded to two decimal places now what i want to share with you is how is it that you can compare companies free cash flow per share at scale that means being able to compare multiple companies all at once so if you look at this wouldn't it be nice if you could get a whole bunch of these key metrics and you can compare them across multiple companies well the great thing about this is and what i'm going to show you 
shows that this is possible and this is in fact one of the best ways that you can use and analyze stocks to be able to quickly spot potential investment opportunities so here we go here we have a whole bunch of different companies and here we have a whole bunch of different metrics so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this multiple stuff i'm gonna get to that in a second and we're just gonna keep the price the price for this company is the way you get it is using the wise price function which you can see how it works right here so you can see here this is how the function works select all the companies and then select the parameter which in this case is price click enter boom you're gonna get all the price data for all these companies now what we're looking for in this case is not the operating cash flow per share but rather the free cash flow per share so we enter free cash flow per share and now we're able to get it for all these different companies that you can see right here and if you're wondering how this is possible it's very simple you're just using the wise function selecting the ticker selecting the fact that you want the free cash flow per share and then you're getting it on a ttm basis ttm basically means for the last four quarters so if you wanted to calculate the free cash flow if we go back to the cash flow statement let's say that this was the quarterly cash flow statement what you will need to do to calculate the free cash flow on a ttm basis is to add the last four quarters of financial data that would give you the free cash flow on a ttm basis and then you would divide that by the latest number of shares outstanding and that would essentially provide you with the free cash flow per share on a ttm basis so going back to this now we have the free cash flow per share now we have the price and we have this number for multiple companies at once cool thing about this is that now now you can start analyzing the price relative to the free cash flow per share to see which companies are trading a lower multiples so if we wanted to do a multiple of free cash flow per share to price we just enter multiple here and the way you do this is very simple you take the price divided by the free cash flow per share and this is going to tell you how many times the free cash flow per share you're paying for that particular stock if i double click here this is going to add a fill for all the different companies and now we can start to look for different investment opportunities obviously if you're paying a lower multiple or a lower price for the free cash flow that the company produces that generally means that's a good opportunity to explore how However, sometimes companies are trading at low multiples because the quality of the company is not as high as it should be or is not as high as others. Therefore, there's more risk and that's why it trades at a lower price. However, this is a good way of doing it. And the best part about this is that you can also add other metrics as well. So as you saw before, what we had was the EPS. This is a metric that we could add as well. And you could add a whole bunch of metrics right here. So that you can filter through them and find those investment opportunities that are going to make a big difference in your portfolio now you know everything about the free cash flow per share metrics so go ahead use this metric so that you can make good investment decisions for your portfolio if you've enjoyed this video please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one